All right, uh, day two of remote learning. So uh, today what we're going to do is uh, fairly simple. We're going to do a little bit of reading, and um, we're going to be working from the reading on the online text, and uh, we're going to use that in conjunction with a Google Doc. Okay, so here's the Google Doc that you guys will be working from. And uh, before you do that, you're going to be working from the text. So what I want you all to do is uh, before you uh, even get to the Google Doc, and you can kind of split your screens if you want to. We're going to be clicking on the online text, and we're going to be going to Chapter 31, Section 1. Post-war uncertainty. There it is. Click on that. And once we get there, we're going to scroll down. Any minute now. <laughs> there it is. So we're going to scroll down. And when you scroll down, the segments of the section that we're working from are Society Challenges Convention. And we're going to continue forward through technological advances and improve life. And that's going to go all the way down to the end of the section. So we'll stop there. So these are really the only parts that we're going to be reading. And you're going to use that information to then respond to the questions on post-war uncertainty on the Google Doc that is going to be posted to the stream. So what I want you to think about as we're reading through this, the first part is going to be mainly about women's role in society and how it changed. And uh, they really give you kind of a lame picture here. A much better picture would have been of a of a common female, you know, young, between the ages of twenty one and, and say thirty five, uh, from the nineteen twenties. And the image that comes to mind, or at least should come to mind, and I'll even look it up for you, uh, would be that of a flapper. And uh, when you take a look at a flapper, it, we're we're taking a look at a much much different notion of uh, what's expected of females in society. So when you look at the dress, when you look at the facial expressions, when you look at the actions, okay, and, and then keep in mind that a lot of the dancing that we're, we're taking a look at here uh, would have been done in nightclubs and at bars, uh, that really kind of pales in comparison <laughs> to, the, to the female of just a few short decades earlier. Uh, and we'll take a look at that. And that'd be Victorian era fashion. Okay, that that's there. We go. Doesn't look too fun or too modern. And you guys can see very rigid, very uppity. Obviously, women were expected to uh, to be seen and not to be heard. And when you juxtapose that with the image of the flapper that we just looked at, these women obviously in the post-war period were in your face. They were confident. They had money in their pockets, sometimes a cigarette, cigarette in their mouth, and maybe a martini in their hand. So things were a little bit different uh, in the interwar years. And uh, I'm sure you guys can, can guess that not everybody approved of it. Uh, but these are important, important changes for women in society. So when you read through that and you take a look at making connections with World War I and making connections with today, okay, the two questions that you're working from are these. Okay, what... Would the role that women played in World War One, uh, or sorry, why would the role that women played in World War One lead to a major push for social equality and voting rights? Think about what women did during the war that was so integral to the war effort, and how would it be the case that the war wouldn't have been won or lost in the case of Germany uh, without women playing a major role on the home front? So, and why did they use that collateral, so to speak? As a as a weapon to gain social equality, voting rights, and recognition. By the way, a, a, a quest that women still strive for today in today's society. And the second part is, is really just making connections with the right now. Uh, what's the connection to the way in which women are viewed and behave in today's society to the changes experienced in the 1920s? So, especially you know, uh, you young girls. When you look at how these women are, you know, portrayed and how they're behaving, and you can even look up videos of flappers or women of the 1920s. You can look up uh, videos of women, you know, from the Victorian era 
and what how they dressed, what they how they were expected to behave. Um, you know, how has this movement impacted women today? You know, think about especially again, like I said, you young girls, what what jobs are you expecting to to go after when you graduate from high school? Uh, you know, some of you might be going to college. Um, how are those aspirations connected with what we're reading about today? So I'm trying to make connections and bridge the gap between the movement uh, that women made and the, the progress that women made after the war with where we are socially in women's roles today. Okay. Second part, the impact of technology. And again, we're going to uh, just really quickly, we're going to read through technological advances improve life and we're going to make connections between the first world war and the rapid improvement to technology that took place between 1914 and 1918 you guys we talked about the airplane in class the airplane was really nothing more than than a couple of you know wooden rods held together by a wire and covered by by canvas you know in the beginning of the war and by the end of the war you have airplanes that can travel hundreds of miles um, carry, you know, tons of pounds and payload, um, and deliver weapons. Uh, how, how is that going to impact the aftermath of world war one? Okay. So in general, how did technologies developed in the aftermath of world war one impact human interaction and behavior? Okay. So think about travel times. Okay. Uh, think about times that it took to communicate or how much time it took to communicate a message during and after the war compared to before the war. What what had changed uh, during the First World War uh, that was applied to society? And then we're going to take a look at making connections to today. How has modern technology impact, been impacted by military science? So think about the things that you use every day um, and, and how those technologies are directly linked to military science you know and if you don't know look it up find some some connections between your modern everyday things that you use uh, on a daily basis and how they have a, you know how they had I should say a military application before they had a um, you know a, a social application and then finally in what ways have new technologies been both beneficial and detrimental to society this is actually I think a really good question that, I, that I've created. I mean, obviously not me, but <laughs> but it's a, it's a good question because especially right now with the coronavirus outbreak, you know, what, what technologies are associated with the spread of coronavirus? You know, and, you know, we usually think of these things as being beneficial and, and generally they are, but sometimes, you know, technologies that we rely on can be detrimental uh, as well. Um, you know, think about, uh, you know, mass media and uh, cell phones, you know, what's good about them? But what also is bad about them? You know, we're, we're starting to see some pretty interesting little things take place here. You know, we're, we're, we have a remote learning, okay? And there's good and bad with that, okay? So you guys have already seen it the first couple of days here. You know, what's the difference between remote learning that technology has given us the, uh, the chance to do and, and the ability to do um, and what's good about it? But what else is bad about it? There's some bad stuff that can, that can manifest itself with this idea that, you know, we're going to be taught from home and we're going to be able to sit at home and, and, you know, just go through, uh, you know, all this information without human contact. What, what can go wrong with that? Okay. So this, this is really kind of more of a, a predictions question. Okay. So when you guys are all done that, you're going to submit that for points. It's going to be 10 points, just like on Monday. And, um, there is also an exit ticket at the end of the, the class. So make sure you guys fill that out for, for uh, complete credit. Uh, period five, you guys did a fantastic job the other day with this. Uh, period eight, we're still missing a couple of, uh, of people. So hopefully uh, you guys get to log on and uh, to work with us. Okay. And, and I want individual responses. Okay. I don't want you guys, you know, you can, I don't care if you guys talk to each other, you know, through social media, that's fine. Obviously we're going to do it anyway, but I want your answers. You know, I don't want, I don't want, five different answers by 30 people. Okay. I, I want you guys to think about this, you know, critically, you got, you got plenty of time. You're sitting at home, you're doing nothing. Okay. The least you can do is give a, uh, a response that, you know, requires a little bit of thought. Okay. So each of these are going to be individual. Okay. And if I see anybody copying from each other's, you know, uh, Google docs here, I'll dock you some points. Not that I want to, but I will. Okay. All right, guys. Uh, so have at it. 
And um, I will see you again shortly.